Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice exponential equation that I got from Twitter, or should I say X? So this problem has X's in it, and I got it from X. Uh, a fellow mathematician on X, Math Jehun, I'm going to share the link uh, down below, the link to his uh, tweet, I mean to his X. Do you say I just X'd my X? Whatever. Anyways, this is kind of weird, but that's such an interesting um, URL, don't you think? Like x.com. It's brilliant. Anyways, um, so this problem um, is really nice because it's exponential, first of all. And second of all, it is rational. So we have a fraction. We kind of need to deal with some complexities. And I'll be presenting two methods. And let's start. If you do know of a third way to do it, please let us know in the comment section down below. Uh, let's start with the first method, almost as always, right? I'm going to go ahead and use substitution. And I notice a to the x is 2 to the third to the x, which can be written as 2 to the 3x, which can be written as 2 to the power x to the power 3, because x times 3 is the same as 3 times x. So 8 to the x can directly be written as 2 to the x cubed because 8 is 2 cubed. Get the idea? So 4 to the x by the same token can be written as 2 to the power x squared. That allows us to substitute 2 to the x for something. How about setting 2 to the x equal to y? And don't question y. This gives us the following. y cubed, which is 8 to the x, plus y squared, divided by y squared minus y equals 6. Now, this should give us a cubic equation. Let's go ahead and cross multiply. Now, at this point, you have two options, whether you can cross out the y or you may not cross out the y. I'm not going to cancel it out. I don't want to cancel anything out. I just want to cross multiply because cross multiplication is fun. So we get 6y squared minus 6y after distributing and then put everything on the same side. y cubed minus 5y squared plus 6y is equal to 0. Even though this is a cubic equation and I know cubic cubic equations are hard to solve sometimes. This one is easy because we can factor out a y and that's actually the y that we didn't cancel out at the very beginning so we ended up getting it but that's okay we can deal with that now. Notice that from here we get y equals 0 and this is factorable into y minus 2 and y minus 3 and remember the trinomial trick you got to find two numbers whose product is 6 and whose sum is negative 5 those numbers are negative 2 and negative 3 Hence, these factors. So far, so good. And obviously, from here, by setting these equal to 0, you get y equals 2 and y equals 3. So it looks like we've got three solutions, right? <laughs> so far. Let's find out. Now, we have the back substitute. What is y? And why did we pick y, right? y is 2 to the power x. Awesome. Let's go to back substitute. y equals 0, which is 2 to the x. Wait a minute. Can 2 to the x be 0? I don't think so. I mean, um, unless x is negative infinity, but negative infinity, as far as I know, is not a number. I mean, you can take the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 2 to the x, and that'll be 0. But this is a limit. Come on, we're solving equations, right? We're doing serious stuff. We're not doing calculus. So we can't find any real values. Can we find complex solutions? I don't think so. Even though 2 to the 2 to the x equals 1, has complex solutions. By the way, it doesn't have any real solutions because, again, with the same rock, 2 to the x cannot be 0. But without 2 to the x being 0, 2 to the 2 to the x can be 1 because in the complex world, everything is possible. By the way, if you like complex numbers, go ahead and check out my other channel where I do problems on complex numbers, which is called A plus BI. Okay, let's go ahead and continue with the problem after this quick commercial break. So y equals 0 doesn't give us anything too bad. Let's proceed with y equals 2. But 2 is 2 to the x. Great. x equals 1 comes up as a solution. Nice and clear. Maybe you knew that already, right? Maybe you test it out. y equals 3 equals 2 to the x. Okay, what am I going to do with this? ln both sides. Because why not? ln ln bring the x to the front and you get x ln 2 equals ln 3. By division, you get x equals ln3 over ln2. Later on, we're going to write this a little differently. You'll see it. Just bear with me, okay? So, we got two solutions, right? Any complex solutions? 
there must be, right? Speaking of complex numbers, let's go ahead and explore them. So we got 2 to the x equals 2, and we said, okay, x equals 1 works, but we can kind of complexify this. How? In the complex world, 1 is expressed as e to the power 2 pi n i. Because if you think about it, on the argand plane, such a fancy name for the coordinate plane, right? We have a real axis and an imaginary axis, and 1 happens to be on the real axis on the positive side, and its distance from 0 is 1 unit. Therefore, the angle it makes is 0 radians or 2 pi radians or 4 pi radians or any multiple of 2 pi radians. Get, get the idea? And of course, you have to multiply it by um, i because e to the i theta is basically a complex number in polar form with modulus 1, which is the absolute value. And of course, that's 1 you're talking about. So this is the complexification of 1, which we can insert to the equation. But wait a minute, we don't have 1. We do. Hey, we always have 1. It's not written, but uh, 2 times 1 is 2, so we can kind of multiply 2 by this. By the way, we're not doing it on both sides, only on one side. That's very important. It's not like multiplying both, both sides by the same number. It's multiplying by 1. Get the idea? Great. Let's go ahead and put a 1 here and do the exponentiation thing, you know, the rules and stuff, and we get that. After natural logging both sides and so on and so forth, you're going to get something like this. x ln 2 equals 1 plus 2 pi ni times ln 2. So do we just cancel out the ln 2s and we end up with this? Well, that should work because ln 2 is not equal to 0, right? So is that the solution? Now notice that if n is equal to 0, you get x equals 1, which previously worked with real numbers, right? But wait a minute, is this the right way to do it? Well, you can also do it this way. You can say x ln 2, and then you can write this as ln 2 plus 2 pi n i, and then you divide both sides by ln 2, and that should give you, uh-oh, that doesn't work. What's wrong with this? Oh, yes, because, oh, what am I doing? This is, the bases are not the same. I just totally, you know, confused myself. So let's back up a little bit. That's a mistake. But I'm not going to cut this part, so you, you'll see that I made a mistake. And some people are like, why don't you cut that part? You make mistakes. You should have a script. Okay, don't worry about it. Take it easy, guys. So now, I can basically do the natural log on both sides, and that's going to give me x ln 2 equals ln 2 plus 2 pi n i. That's probably the safest way to do it. And now we can divide everything by ln 2, divide by ln 2, and divide by ln 2. And then these are going to cancel out, and now we're going to get x equals 1. Again, the real part is still 1, but the imaginary part is slightly different. You could write the i first of it if you want. But n equals 0 again is going to give us x equals 1, but this is a more general solution. n, again, before I forget, n is an integer. So far, so good. And if you do the same thing with the 3, you're going to get something like ln 3 over ln 2 plus 2 pi k over ln 2, I mean, Two. Yes, that's what I mean, not what I wrote, times i. That's just the other solution, and I used a different integer. Uh, it doesn't matter because they don't have to be the same. Make sense? Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method real quick, super quick, and then we will finish up with that. So, 8 to the x plus 4 to the x divided by 4 to the x minus 2 to the x. Now, we're going to go ahead and factor out a 2 to the x here because we that's a common factor. That's not the greatest common factor, by the way. Be careful with that. But I'm taking out a common factor that's important, that's common to both the numerator and the denominator. Now, 2 to the x can never be 0. Remember, we talked about it. Now you get a nice equation. This is 4 to the x plus 2 to the x equals 6 times 2 to the x minus 6. 4 to the x is 2 to the power x squared. So let's write it that way. Bring the 6 times that, minus 5 times 2 to the x plus 6 equals 0. And again, this is factorable as a trinomial as 2 to the x minus 2 times 2 to the x minus 3 equals 0. Set each factor equal to 0, and you'll get the exact same solutions as before. But one thing that can be that can, that we can do a little differently is writing one of the solutions as uh, with base 2. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.